We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We're already one week into our tour of India, where the beauty has been non-stop and the luxury seems to be building. We're now spending two days in the oasis of Udaipur, referred to by some as the city of lakes and palaces, and as the Venice of the East by others. Can this Rajasthan jewel beat the state's capital in family-friendly fun culture? Let's get to it. We just landed in Udaipur, and our bags are actually driven here by our drivers last night. So we don't have to pick anything up, we only have our carry-ons, which means we just have to meet our guide and start exploring. Hello. How you doing? I'm Phil. All this, the drivers, the guides, the tours, the hotels, it was all curated by Inspirato. We're doing a bespoke trip with them. If you want to learn more about Inspirato, go to followabc.com slash pass. With no time to waste, we're going to head straight to our first activity, which is checking out a couple of temples. Now, we're going to hit two, but we can only film in one because the other is a private temple for the royal family. And that's okay because the one that we can film in is the more beautiful of the two. We're still in the state of Rajasthan, but now we're in the southern portion. This is one of the three capitals of Miwar. And these are the Saspahu temples. Saspahu is actually the local variation of the name Sahasrabahu. This place is called Nagda. Nagda means burning cobra. Because the king was bitten by a cobra, he still lived because a snake charmer saved him. He went to collect all of the snakes and he burned them in here. How do you feel about I don't like it. I don't like burning snakes. Not even cobras? No, not even cobras. All snakes are good. Some of them are venomous and some of them do bad things. They're all good snakes. The reason these temples were made was because the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law had a rivalry of who can make the best temple. The daughter-in-law made this temple. She designed this temple for others to make. This temple is much simpler than the mother-in-law. And the reason for that is because she just wanted it to be done quicker and she didn't have that much money to spend on it. Overall, the daughter-in-law's version is much simpler. It's more open air, which I kind of like, the indoor-outdoor concept. And there's still a lot of detail to the carvings that we have on the exterior here, but it's nothing compared to the mother-in-law's. And as we walk over to that direction, you're gonna notice all of these mini temples along the way. Each one of the temples basically honors a different Hindu god. Now, let's have a look at the mother-in-law. This one is completely enclosed, and we can step in here. I don't even have to take shoes off because this is not an active temple. There's no longer a statue of a god in here. Chances are that statue of a god that was in here was stolen at some point. Notice the window screens here that allow for the side airflow to keep the temperature regulated inside of the temple, and how all of these pillars and all of the decorative work really is individual pieces that fit together kind of like Legos. But the most interesting part is on the outside. Don't mind Cole, he's just looking for geckos. There's so much more detail, so many more carvings here, but they're a little risque. Some of these are of Kama Sutra. There's some a little bit more detailed than others, like this one. And then up there, everybody's having a good time. But not the girl in the middle. She's actually covering her eyes because she's shy. And you can see that a lot of these carvings are missing their faces. And that's because a lot of these temples were destroyed or defaced, quite literally, by Muslims hundreds of years ago. This is a great start to us touring around Udapur, but we are hungry and we're gonna go have lunch at a place that has just as much history. Devigar Palace was the royal residence of the rulers of Delwara from the mid 1700s until the mid 1900s. 1900s, and today is home to one of the most luxurious hotels in all of India. But we're not here to stay, we're here to eat. Wow, this is so, so beautiful. This is gorgeous. Beautiful view to sit and have a four course lunch, and that lunch is included with the trip in our package. It's a special day and a special place, so why not have a special drink? I'm doing a Kir Royale, which is just sparkling wine with some creme de cassis. And Aaron, doing a roll standby. Espresso martini. Mmm, once it hits your lips, it's so good. It's been so long since Aaron had a cocktail, she forgot how to toast. I did, I totally forgot. Cheers, my love. Cheers, baby. 
and lunch starts with a little soup and salad. And for the main courses, we have fish and chicken. There is three courses in one. First up, we have a little bit of vanilla ice cream. Second up, some key lime pie. It's ice cream textured though. Third, I have no clue, chocolate cake. Very saucy. What's your favorite, Colt? Key lime pie. Woo, I was surprised after that face he made. Really? Key lime. Mm -hmm. We're gonna eat our dessert. We're heading to the hotel we are actually staying at and I am so excited about it because we just left the Oberai in Jaipur and now we're going to possibly an even better Oberai resort here in Udipur. Good afternoon. Oh, nice warm towel. This is like a ginger juice with a rose water and it's sparkling. I think I got some of the ingredients in there, but it's really refreshing. Very hot pink. Thank you. Oh, beautiful colors on you, honey. Thank you. Love these colors. It's like non-stop gifts, they keep coming. This is my favorite hotel chain. Pull the string from down here. Yeah. Our room is already ready and the bags are in there already, so we're set. Oberoi Ure Vilas has a reputation as the top hotel in Udaipur. It's five-star luxury is situated on the banks of Lank Pichola and has more than 120,000 square meters of beautiful gardens, and architecture that reflects the charm of Udaipur itself. The resort is built on the old royal hunting grounds from two to 300 years ago. The king used to come out here and stay up on the hill and some of the servants' quarters were down here closer to the water and those buildings are still on the property today. But here's our room. Phil and I have our own room with a big king-size bed and the kids have their own separate room with two twins, just like we did in Jaipur. We're right over the courtyard area, so we even have a balcony we can go outside and sit and look over it. The window, gorgeous, little reading, homework nook for the kids. And we have an additional sitting area too. And the bathroom is beautiful. I love that there is a separate vanity and this big clawfoot tub, separate shower, and of course, private toilet area. And the rug they have in here, we know exactly how that's made because of our adventures in Jaipur. So much of our travel lifestyle is fueled by our favorite credit cards. From Centurion Lounge access from our American Express Platinum cards. To premier qualifying points through our United Club Infinite card. Across our collection of cards, we earn everything from free room upgrades at luxury resorts. To business and first class seats and awards flights around the globe. And these cards are just one of dozens of cool products that make up the new Stuff We Love collection on our website. Stuff We Love is a constantly updated curation of our favorite things across categories like experiences and adventures, travel clubs and travel gear, health and beauty, travel-friendly financial offerings, items for your home, and more. To learn more about our favorite credit cards, go to followabc.com slash credit cards. Or go to followabc.com slash stuff we love to see all the things that help us travel comfortably and live a life of adventure. It is a beautiful day. We're ready to take on Udipur and we're starting at the City Palace. Eagle-eyed viewers may recognize the main part of the palace just to the right here because this was the main filming location for the James Bond film Octopussy. City Palace is comprised of three different parts, the museum, the royal residence, and a hotel, which is where Roger Moore stayed during filming. It'll be so fun running down this hill. She's gonna like, ah! We keep walking up this hill and the views get prettier and prettier, and now we can see the Oberoi where we're staying. The museum is just to the left, the hotel is right behind me, and right over here is the royal family residence. So right over here then is the museum, but it's not a typical museum in the sense of having works of art sitting out in galleries. It just means that this is the part of the palace that is no longer an active residence, and it's just used as a national monument of sorts. The balcony up here with the colored glass and mirrors was the queen's bedroom, and then just down and off to the side of that was the concubine's room, which Let's be honest, it was pretty convenient for the king. Well, maybe he had seven concubines plus the queen, and that's where the name of the movie came from. Let's check out inside. This is the historical genealogical tree of the rulers of Miwar. It's really cool to see that many in a row. Like, this goes back all the way to the 7th century, 6th century. 
And this area is dedicated to the armor and the tools that they used in battle. So is this the same one that they used 400 years ago? Yes. I think that's the world's first Swiss Army knife. From India. <laughs> well, those are super fun and probably come in handy. Look how beautiful this velvet cover to the sword is. It's so pretty and even the handle's gorgeous. The development of this palace complex took place over 400 years and this is the oldest part that started construction in the mid 1500s. This is where they used to keep the parakeets and the carrier pigeons. They used to have female, but now we have female. <laughs> this is Badi Mahal, which means garden palace. And even though we've climbed all of these stairs and it really seems like we're on top of the world, technically we're still on ground level because this is on the top of the hill. They even had a recreational swimming pool right here hundreds of years ago, in the 1600s. I wonder if they played Marco Polo. <laughs> I don't know about that one. And this is a beautiful view overlooking the old part of the city. And you get a sneak peek of the oldest Hindu temple. Keep that in mind, because we're going to show you that in a minute. I love the story of this room. There was a really beautiful princess, and two kings wanted to marry her. So they decided that they would fight each other and battle to see who would win her hand. But she didn't want any fighting. She wanted to end this violence. So she sacrificed her own life and took the poison so there wouldn't be any fighting. I'm gonna fight with you. This is the peacock dancing courtyard and the king would sit right up here in his apartment overlooking this courtyard and watch the people dance, just like I would have done if I was in that situation. And then this was his dining room, private dining room just off to the side where he would eat, just like I would do. Back in the day, those were rubies and emeralds, but now it's painted glass. We're gonna take the secret passageway to get out. This is the largest Hindu temple in Udaipur, and it's from the 1600s. And we're gonna climb it if we can cross the street. Namaste. Namaste. And now that we're up here, we need to take off our shoes. Have you ever noticed how stubby the toes of Aaron, Brooklyn, and Colt are? Leave us alone. I feel like I've got pretty unattractive toes. I don't want you looking at them. This is an active temple, so they're doing prayers and people come in and out to worship and also tourists are trying to come in and out and get a look as well. We're going to stop monkeying around and get out of here. Good transition. Excellent transition. It looks like it's about to jump down and try to chase me now. We're back on our resort property and we're heading down to Lake Pichola. It's sunset hour now, so we're gonna get to see Udapur from a different perspective, from the water. Right behind me is the lake palace that we saw earlier, but this is the front of the palace. This is an 18th century summer palace for the royal family. Most of these homes up here are hundreds of years old, and over there is the city palace where we were earlier today. Right behind me is the city wall, which goes all the way up the side of the mountain. At the very top is the watchtower where they could keep an eye out for approaching enemy from the other side of the mountain. And then just to the left of that are the pink buildings, which are essentially the hunting lodges for the king. And that's where his subjects would take animals and basically push them right in front of him so that he could kill them without having to leave the hunting lodge. Some more recognizable scenes from the movie Octopussy. And the original idea for the Taj Mahal came from that dome over there. That's where Shah Jahan saw it, was inspired, and that's what he kind of based the Taj Mahal big, huge dome off of. Once again, there's way too much to see and do here for us to squeeze everything into just two days. And honestly, our kids wouldn't find that volume of history nearly as interesting as we do. You can only tour so many palaces and temples before the distinctions start to blur for younger minds. But it's safe to say that we've all enjoyed this leg of our India tour the most so far and we still have a week to go with even more exotic cities and experiences on the itinerary. So please hit that subscribe button and follow our journey. We're the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, 
kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people.